When I get a new product, my favorite feeling is the disdain the owner has for me, just flowing out of that product. That's how I feel holding Final Mouse products. Love them or hate them, Final Mouse makes some pretty neat products in very limited batches that are highly sought after. As far as I can tell, a lot of you hate them. But let's get into it. I'm super excited. This is their latest special edition. It's already shipping, but uh, if you didn't pre-order it, uh, like every piece of electronics that exists, you're not getting this. So today we have the Starlight Small and the Starlight Medium. And I think what makes these mice really special is the design. With all these limited editions they've been doing, these are stunning mice. Like they're works of art uh, in a sense. And like they're the kind of thing that you, I would have trouble using. I'd almost want to put on a stand, put it in the background of a stream or something. Cause these are beautiful and holy smokes, it's light. I knew it was light. The small is uh, rated for 42 grams, the big one for 47. They say uh, because of their process, it could be plus minus uh, one or two grams. Shocking how light this feels. It is nothing, it's disappearing. Like uh, if I looked away, I would assume that there's nothing in my hand. That's not true, it's still there. <laughs> uh, let's weigh it, because I need to know. So there's nothing out there that you can get that's quite this light, but I'd say the most comparable, or certainly the one they're probably going for, is the Logitech G Pro X Super Light. That's my gaming mouse of choice. I think the build quality is fantastic. Uh, the accuracy, the performance, all of it is is, is phenomenal. I, it's Logitech. There's issues uh, in terms of like double clicking and whatnot, but they have one of the best customer service in the business, so it's pretty easy to RMA stuff. So this is the small. Um, so it's they say that it's 42 grams. Uh, I've seen online that is a little bit more usually, but still 44 grams, that's wild. Just kidding, we're going for the medium. 50 grams, that's still over what they say. Honestly, to me, that's a little bit disappointing. The super light, it's a uh, 62, 62, 63. The super light and the medium seem to be the more closer uh, in size. So I would say that they're comparable. I think that the small for small hands is great. If you're like a really aggressive claw player, that might be the right fit. I'm more of a medium. I do kind of a hybrid, a hybrid thing where it's like not quite palm, not quite claw. And I think a lot of people do that. So I'm so excited, but you'll have to wait till I talk about our sponsor, Secret Labs. Thanks to Secret Lab for sponsoring today's video. Secret Lab chairs are engineered to keep you incredibly comfortable for long hours at work and play. Their new Titan Evo 2022 chair keeps you feeling comfortable for longer. Four-way lumbar support, ultra comfortable line of different seat material, and more. All chairs come with up to a five-year extended warranty and a 49-day return policy. Head to the link in the description below to check out Secret Lab. In terms of build quality, how they achieve getting it so small is actually like a, a magnesium for the top. Uh, and the bottom as well, although the bottom one is is apparently quite a bit more fragile to, to shave down on the weight. In terms of like what you would feel, this doesn't feel metallic. Like when I read that it was magnesium, I thought it would kind of feel cold to the touch or something. That was kind of a big controversy where they said that they invented the honeycomb mouse. They're, they're the biggest inventors. They've done the biggest breakthrough in mouse design ever. And everyone's like, actually there's uh, bin mice like that. I think light mice are the way to go. I think like takes less energy to move the mouse. So your, your endurance is better. You can get there faster. You can be more consistent. For me, the danger of like spilling food or drink or just greasy hands ruining my mouse, that's scary. This isn't the first Starlight mouse. This is the, the Phantom, uh, which is this color scheme. And they've done a lot of different ones. They have like a Hades and Aries, like kind of God theme ones. And they're all really beautiful, just stunning. And I think like side by side, it'd be cool. I wish I'd started collecting them, but uh, you know, you can only collect one thing in this day and age. And I collect the smiles of viewers watching this video. Pokemon guard. Nope. <laughs> that's expensive. <laughs> It's got its PTFE feet. Um, they're pretty small and it doesn't come with changes of them. It feels pretty smooth, not as smooth as the Superlight, especially if you put the uh, glide pad on the bottom. One thing that you'll notice is that there is no spot to remove to put the wireless receiver. I think that's a mistake. I'll take the five grams to get that spot right in there. I think that every mouse that is wireless needs to have a spot to put its wireless receiver in. This is this one. And in fact, we should probably get back to unboxing all the other stuff. It's a little bit bigger than a normal one, which is nice. A little less the chance of losing it. Remaining what's else in the box is the receiver, the mouse, and this paracord cable. Wow, that feels fantastic. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Oh, I feel so fancy. This is a good quality cable. Wow, I got no complaints about this, except for this. You see this? 
You see this? Micro USB. I understand that the connector in the mouse for micro USB is lighter than the USB type C one. Like I said, I'm willing to take a few grams to get type C. I'm so sick of anything being other than type C for USB. We are way past that point. Good cable, bad connector. Get it together, final mouse. Get it together. That's the future. Oops, I need that cable, sorry. Uh, when these mice were first coming out, there was quite a few issues of build quality, uh, inconsistencies where like the scroll wheel was actually kind of slightly off centered. I wouldn't say that it's spot on. It le looks a little bit uh, leaned to the left, but it's not bad. And like, I'm only looking for that because I've seen that online. There was also issues of uh, some of the pads in the mouse sliding and becoming sticky. The PCB is more secured in. They've pre-tensioned the buttons so that they feel a little more clicky and light. And I say that those buttons do feel pretty good. Uh, scroll wheel feels good. It's a little bit, I kind of think it's a little too resistant, but that's a preference thing. Side buttons, those feel fine. I think they're a little bit small. I can definitely see in the heat of battle, I would double press or press both. I prefer my buttons a little more spaced out than what is on this mouse. The button I really don't like is this DPI one. It's kind of just like, it feels, like when you've had a controller for like seven years and you didn't realize that some juice got into the buttons, takes a couple presses before it, it, it uh, like kind of gets soft again. A big complaint about this mouse is that there is no companion software. That's fine. You don't really need to be able to customize everything on your mouse. So the final sensor, uh, it's a, considered a flawless sensor and it's highly rated, it's, it's well regarded. It's got sensitivity up to 20,000 DPI, but this bad boy, you only have the pre-built for sensitivity options. So 400, 800, 1600, and 3200. That's fine for most things. For me, I always play at 800 unless a specific game requires something else. So that's fine. But if you're someone that like really does tweak with the settings or has a weird sensitivity thing for a specific esports game that you play, just keep that in mind. You're stuck at those base settings. Battery life on this mouse is supposed to be quite excellent. They say that it's about 160 hours of use. So they say that it's like three weeks of, of heavy use, seven weeks of kind of softer use, 16 weeks of like idle. We're set up now. Currently plugged in is the Starlight Small. Uh, we had to switch our G Pro X Superlight just because the one we were having was having pairing issues. So you'll now see that it is 100% less pride, sadly. And I've uh, added the Glide Foot Pad version at the bottom because that's what I use at home. Uh, it really does make it smoother, at least in my brain, <laughs> my smooth brain. <laughs> First impression is, wow, this is light. The small one is a little bit too small for me. I find my pinky just ends up dragging. That's not a good feeling for gaming. I want to kind of like have it part of the whole. You're the big spoon. <laughs> I'm, oh yeah, I'm the, I'm the real big spoon. <laughs> I love you, mouse. <laughs> you know what, it's short circuit. We ain't got time for that. Small one, too small for me. Too small, mouse. So we're actually gonna start first with the G Pro X, which is my baseline, uh, but I don't play a lot of CSGO, so I need a little bit of practice to see how that feels. Also to find my sense with this mouse. Okay, so this feels very comfortable to me. It's light, it's easy, uh, it's just accurate. It's just like, it feels like an extension of my body in a good way, although I'm terrible at CSGO. So yeah, this is feeling pretty good. Let's compare it to the Starlight. So one thing that I don't love, little nitpick, is the power button is a little dip switch, which is fine or not. I don't know if it's a dip switch, but it doesn't really have a label which one's on or off. I don't know if it's my mouse that's dead or if I'm having the wrong thing or if this isn't working. Uh, but that's not a great experience. One of the problems about not having companion software, with the launch tech, we were having trouble, but we were able to fairly easily diagnose where the problem was coming from and then solve it. Here, it's just like, uh, is it the, the battery that's dead? Is it the mouse receiver that's not working? Because when I plug in the cable, it'll work. And so I know that uh, everything's gonna be all right, but I'm gonna cry first. There you go, it's working. So. Uh, I don't know if it just was a charge issue or what it was. Speaking of software, no RGB either. That's totally fine for me on a gaming mouse. I would disable it because I want the extra battery instead. The fact that I am reminded of the fact that I don't care that there's no RBG, the point. <laughs> I guess it's the flex, it's the um, it's the fun of it, it's the collectability of them. And I think like that's, to me, is a big use case of this, is you could buy the whole set and have a beautiful background in your stream. Uh, you could just enjoy the collecting, maybe the resale value is good, you just buy them and then resell them for 25% more uh, than you bought it for, you dirty ass scalper. But to me, like, 
I am not that interested in, in a beautiful mouse. I'm more interested in the usability. And the usability is also there. I don't know if I like it more than the G Pro X. I don't even know if I like it more than the Viper Ultimate. The accuracy is good. Uh, it's a flawless sensor and I've mostly dialed in my settings uh, on my other mouse so I can trust that this feels pretty good. A big thing that was happening early on is that people were complaining about the DPIs that were they were advertising. They were actually off what they normally are. And so they've said on this revision, they've fixed it and they've gotten it closer to what people expect when they're getting that kind of DPI. This doesn't feel as bad as I'm guessing what people first thought, but, uh, ooh, hello. Oh God, that's a scout. No, nope, not an op. <laughs> Oops. Would I recommend this mouse if you were a gamer that wants the best gaming mouse? Not necessarily. You might find that this ambidextrous shape is what appeals to you. You'll like the crazy lightness of it. I think the real appeal is how it looks. It's the special limited edition appeal of it. And so if that appeals to you, then this is a cool mouse. I think like the different colorways, they're pretty sick and you can wait for the next one if you like that more. I really like the white version, the full white. I don't like white mice, but the detailing on the white just looks really good, the way it catches the light. This is a cool product. I'm glad it exists. It's not for me. It's probably not for you. I know people complain when we review $100 mice. Uh, this bad boy is $189 US. $150 US, I believe. But you can get a regular G Pro for like $130. You can get... Uh, <laughs> like, like the Viper for cheaper. You can get the Steel Series Arctic 3 or whatever it is. That's an excellent mouse for cheap. Uh, there's lots of better options if you're worried about a buck. If you just want the 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 friggin' most swaggiest of mice. If you if you're a sneakerhead equivalent of Mouse Mouse Town, this is your boy. But you won't find it. That's what I'm saying. It's like Sneaker Town, where it's like you just gotta you gotta wait in line at the Nike store. Uh, and buy this boy. Yeah, but... I know, it's over. Just like this video. Thank you for watching this short circuit. If you like this, there's plenty of other uh, reviews of me unboxing mice. Unboxing! Unboxing! We turn the boxes into spheres. Is crazy, dog. Is crazy. Uh, but like and subscribe uh, or check out They're Just Movies, our movie review podcast where we, uh, weirdly enough, talk about movies. Bye bye.